family and friends, it's Kim here at Hancock Homestead Gardens. And today it is Friday, December the 23rd. And it is time for another Yuletide vlog. And um, since it is December the 23rd, I am going to be making Christmas dinner. And the reason for that is because towards the middle of the week when my siblings and I were looking at the weather forecast, it was supposed to be bad on Sunday, which is actually Christmas Day. So we said, instead of battling the bad weather, let's just move our Christmas up to Friday. And then that way, everyone can avoid traveling during the bad weather. Well, since Wednesday, Missouri weather changed, and now we're supposed to have a nice Sunday. But since everyone had gone ahead and rearranged all their plans, we're going to go ahead and do it today. So my brother and my sister are traveling here. Um, Katie's here, Karen and Matt will be in later, and uh, we're going to be having our Christmas today, tonight, later tonight. And uh, so I'm going to be fixing the meal, and I thought I would share with you um, what we're having. So um, whenever I get ready to fix a meal, I always think about my cooking times for each of my foods, and then I put them in accordingly. And since I know my ham, which I already put in a roaster. For those of you who don't know how to fix ham, um, you're gonna need a roasting pan or something similar to this. And, uh, and then I put my ham in, and I always put my ham in sideways. And then, because the roasting pan lid does not go all the way on um, because of the size of the ham, I am putting aluminum foil over the top to help uh, protect it from burning and to hold the moisture in. Okay, so I have preheated my oven at 350, and I'm going to go ahead and stick my ham in. Now, um, you can buy all different kinds of hams. This ham happens to be a, what they call a cook ham. That's actually the name of the company, C-O-O-K, cook ham. And, uh, but we also like farmland hams, and um, so we like the hams. You can buy hams that are pre-sliced. And even come with a glaze package, um, which we have enjoyed in the past. But we also prefer the ham that you can slice yourself because um, my brother and John and Matt, they like the thicker slices. And uh, so John can slice the ham according to what they like as, uh, as far as thickness goes. So yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and put the ham in. I can get it started. A ham will take um, about two hours. A ham takes two to three hours to cook. So that's the first thing that I'm going to get into the stove. Um, whenever you buy a ham, there's a little square information tag on it, and it will usually tell you on there how long to cook it. So, um, and, and hams kind of vary according to weight. But anyway, I better get going here. Okay, so while the ham is going, I'm going to go ahead and do my scalloped potatoes. And um, my scalloped potatoes are very simple. Um, John has sliced and peeled the potatoes for me. I have arthritis in my hands, and the slicing and the, or the peeling and the slicing just really hurts my hands. So he has gone ahead and done that for me. I want to give him credit for that. Um, and I use russet potatoes. Now if you can't find russet potatoes then you can use red. Um, but you don't want to use white because the white will become too soft. White potatoes are more for um, a baked potato. Um, your russets and your reds are more for cooking. <laughs> I laid everything out and it's right here on the table. Okay so for my white sauce I'm going to be using whole milk, butter, um, flour, and then salt and pepper. And uh, it's a very easy um, combination to remember. Okay, so for my white sauce, what I do is um, I use three tablespoons of butter, three tablespoons of flour, and three cups of milk. Um, however, I double the recipe. So therefore, I'm going to be doing six tablespoons of butter, six tablespoons of flour, and six cups of milk. Um, if you can remember the equation of one to one, okay? So for every tablespoon of butter you put in, you need a tablespoon of flour and a cup of milk. So um, 
I go, since I'm doubling the recipe that Betty Crocker has, I go six, six, and six. All right. Now, a stick of butter is actually eight tablespoons, okay? Okay, so I have um, measured out and cut off my six tablespoons of butter. Here's the extra two tablespoons I'm going to be using uh, on the table for rolls. All right, so I got to get my six tablespoons of butter melted. And you actually want to bring your butter to um, a, um, a small boil, a gentle boil. All right, I'm having to um, use my computer as a recording device or else I would show you the boiling butter. <laughs> like I said, it's just a gentle boil because you want the butter hot. Okay, now to this I'm going to add six tablespoons of flour. So to this I'm going to add one teaspoon of salt, okay, and a half a teaspoon of pepper. you. See if I can show that to you. Can you see that before I dump it out? Okay, there you go. There's your butter, flour, salt and pepper mixture. Okay, and then to that mixture I am going to add six cups of milk. Alright, now I'm going to stir that up and I'm going to bring it to a boil. Okay, and it will thicken as it begins to boil. Now, while I'm waiting for that to boil, and I want to keep an eye on it because I don't want it to burn, but while I'm waiting for it, I'm going to go ahead and spray my pans. If you spray or dishes, if you spray your casserole dishes, then your um, potatoes won't stick. Okay, and your lids. Now I'm going to go ahead, this mixture isn't quite thick yet, but I'm going to go ahead and put some in the bottom so I can start layering my potatoes. It will thicken as the potatoes cook too. Okay. Alright, let's go ahead and get the potatoes in there. And you kind of want your potatoes to all be um, kind of the same size. This one's a little bit thicker than the other, so I'm going to go ahead and slice it down. Oops. See, I'm not very good at slicing right now because of my arthritis. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, if you want them to kind of cook evenly, you want them to be approximately the same size. See, this is about how thick you want your potatoes. And this is how thick some of them are. So go for the thinner ones. But I'm grateful he sliced them. I'll just have to watch my cooking time and just kind of make sure they're done. Alright, so I have both of my casserole dishes full, and I still have, like I said, enough potatoes left over that I can make a small batch of mashed potatoes. <clears throat> I'm 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stick these in the oven. Go ahead and pour the rest of this white sauce on. Because um, like I said, the white sauce will thicken up as it cooks. Now here's something else I need to tell you, is that should you get to the end and you say, oh my goodness, these don't have quite enough sauce on them, you do not need to go back and make a new batch. What you can do is um, you can sprinkle a little bit more flour on the top, like so, okay? And you can put a little bit more milk on top. Until it reaches the level that you want it. And when that milk gets hot and it starts boiling up, it will um, cook down that flour and the extra milk that you put in there. So, there you go. Alright, go ahead and get this in the oven. And one thing that I like to do is um, my potatoes have a tendency to boil over. So to save the bottom of my stove, I set them on top of a cookie sheet. And uh, I actually set them on top of a lined cookie sheet. <laughs> um, so that when they boil over, um, they're not so hard to clean up. All right, put this in there. My casserole dishes. Yeah, for easy cleanup, this is the um, best thing to remember is to put them on top of a cookie sheet. Okay, okay friends. Well, um, I took a little break and uh, I've come back in. The ham and the potatoes have been in the oven for about um, an hour and a half now. So I've decided to um, go ahead and start the rest of the foods. And I scraped the carrots and cut them into small pieces. Cut them in half. I don't know if I can show you that. There you go. And um, I've got them on the stove ready to um, boil. And uh, now I'm going to get my chicken into the oven. Um, I have a daughter that uh, doesn't like ham, pork of any kind. So um, I always fix her chicken, <clears throat> and uh, what I do is I just line my pan with oil, and I put a little bit of oil, olive oil on the top. So yeah, there we go. Okay, and uh, make sure they're completely covered. There we go. Okay, and so then I'll stick them in the oven for um, 10 minutes, take them out, flip them over, cook them for another 10 to 15 minutes until they're uh, finished, and uh, then they'll be done. And Karen is bringing um, green beans, and she'll fix the stuffing when she gets here. Katie has already made the eggs, and uh, she'll be making the crescent rolls soon. So that'll wrap up our holiday meal. We'll have everything ready to go. Oh, I need to put the pie in. We're going to have pumpkin pie, and, and Jody's bringing in apple pie, and then we have all kinds of cookies and desserts. So that's going to be our holiday meal. And uh, I'm obviously not going to wear this, and I need to get ready. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this vlog now. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to know more about our homestead and what we do on it, please subscribe. Um, I'll try to show a little bit of our celebration tonight, but I want to respect my family's privacy, so I kind of need to know, kind of see how much they're going to allow me to do that. Um, but I hope you guys have um, a happy holiday weekend and uh, enjoy your families as I'm about ready to enjoy mine. All right, well, this is Kim at Hancock Homestead Gardens saying bye for now.